you see Hope Ranch has been going out to um, all of our, uh, many of our providers, giving people PPE supplies that may not be able to get them elsewhere. One of our providers is us helping us right here. And not only are they um, a black LGBT organization, but they're also a provider. And they're also one of the grantees of the DC Hope Grant. So they're seriously been giving money to help people that are suffering from both HIV and the pandemic. Those are the types of things you have to do. You really have to be targeted and intentional in your outreach. And that's what Dr. DeMarc and Hickson and the folks at Us Helping Us have been doing. I'm so glad to have you on the show. We uh, couldn't, me, couldn't let this, this week go by without talking to you all. Absolutely. And I'm sorry I couldn't make your event um, the other night. I know that folks had tried to reach out and I don't want to spend too much time, but I want to thank you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll let you help me make this presentation to myself. <laughs> Yes, Denise, that's a recognition for all of your work here in uh, Washington, D.C. and in the Black community and raising the voice and concerns that um, impact the Black community more. So on behalf of us helping us and our board of directors, we wanted to honor you and recognize you with one of our highest organizational awards with our founders award. Um, for, again, your uh, contributions and work that you um, do in the community. Uh, this is one of those, oh, okay, I'm trying to get it open. I uh, don't want to take a lot of time doing this. Um, and I didn't open it before because I wanted to be surprised with, while you were on the air. <laughs> and this is a Tiffany box. And so yes, this is really is. beautiful in the <laughs> Tiffany color. Yeah. So uh, let's see if I can get this out, or is it still wrapped again? This is good. no, it's not. It oh, wrapped good, again. wonderful, beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Um, there's yeah. a little message on the back as well. It does say uh, "Us Helping Us People Into Living Founders Award" presented to Denise Rollard Barnes, December third, twenty twenty. Thank you yeah. so very much. Oh, and it's got a little door. Oh, for the battery. Yeah, for the battery. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for what else ever whatever else <laughs> Tiffany gives <laughs> sells. No, but this is perfect. Looking for you know. a so much, yeah, that's all right. No, no, no. I'm good. I, this is perfect and uh you know, I like clocks. I really do. So this is wonderful. I mean, just a good old, you know, fashioned clock. I mean, not right. this digital stuff. So this is is wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Now let's talk about um, you know, just what's been going on um, with the whole issue. I mean, we've been talking about COVID-19, but AIDS is still with us. It is. And as you know, um, we now have an initiative, a national initiative to end the HIV epidemic by 2030. And so um, the COVID pandemic is much like the HIV epidemic when it started in the 80s that folks didn't know what was happening and began um, a lot of just other things and thoughts and feelings about stigma, because now we can even think about somebody who we know that may have tested positive for COVID. It's kind of like, oh, do you still have COVID? How can I get COVID? So it has that same type of feel as HIV. It's not the same because we didn't get this same type of national response. But organizations like us helping us are still here on the ground doing this work day in and day out. Um, working with um, clients who are living with HIV, who don't know how COVID is going to impact them, which was a lot that we saw at the very beginning of the pandemic. But as um, Sheila Alexander Reed said, we've now been working um, at the face of the intersection of both this, this pandemic and HIV epidemic, um, especially among those that are most vulnerable. Tell, tell me, um, how, how does us helping us actually help? Um, so we first, programs? yeah, we first start, oh, sorry. Um, so we, um, provide um, a number of clinical, behavioral, and essential support services all at our locations or each of our locations. So we um, provide mental health services. Uh, we provide sexual health screenings, which includes a comprehensive HIV and STD screenings. Uh, we um, provide a number of support groups um, from individuals living with HIV to those who are starting PrEP and still have concerns like medical concerns um, and uh, just the host of other 
uh, social services. So we have a food pantry, a clothing closet. We provide emergency finance, limited financial assistance because we know we don't have an infinite pot of money for um, individuals now as we're as as we're seeing some of these restrictions lifted like with the evictions we're now seeing an influx of individuals who um, um, are potentially facing housing instability uh, so we have our two office locations and as you saw in the video we do get into different uh, neighborhoods that have limited access to services to really take the services to where people live You mentioned that there's a either, I don't know, I can't recall whether you said a cure or a vaccine or, or what, but by 2030. Um, I mean, it, it's been a while. We've had uh, AIDS and HIV with us as a known um, disease for what, close to about 30, 40 years? How long has about it been? 40, mm -hmm. Yeah, about 40, yeah. Years. 40 years. About 40 years. And so now you were saying about 50 years before we uh, make any progress. How, how satisfied or dissatisfied are the folks there, at, uh, us helping us with the progress that's being made on the science side? Well, we are always excited for any medical advancement that um, is discovered. Um, so that we can to get to so that we can get to zero new infections or even for a cure. So we are involved in um, a number of studies. I know you were mentioning earlier about the vaccine trials for COVID, but we are excited about many of the cure studies, whether it's a functional cure or a sterilizing cure. I don't want to get all in too much into the science, but it's for a cure. Um, and and we're also excited for the new science that's coming out recently, um, whether it's long acting injectables where somebody doesn't have to come in um, and get a prescription and take a pill every day, that it can be an injection that can last for like 30 days. So we, so incremental steps, um, even incrementally and in using a condom, it's just as effective um, as many of these uh, uh, biomedical me uh, medications. So um, we um, continue to add more tools to our tool belt to be able to end the epidemic. So it's just like with COVID, you can wear a mask, you can sanitize your hands, physically distance, and test regularly. Very similar to HIV. If you wear a condom during sexual activities, if you're living with HIV, take your medications. There are medications if you are not living with HIV that prevent you from getting HIV. So we have tools that will help us to end the epidemic by 2030. And are you, uh, I mean, following the numbers, mm -hmm. um, are folks more conscious? I mean, are we doing better at preventing, um, uh, you know, HIV or, uh, and testing? How are we doing in both, um, both of those areas? Yeah, um, I think we, of course, have our ebbs and flows because some people, like with many things, get kind of a fatigue, just like how we're seeing like mass fatigue for folks wearing a mask even now during the COVID pandemic. So it's just really us really staying vigilant and really staying out in the community to let people know that I, that neither of these viruses have gone anywhere. Like, right. So we're in the holidays and now we want to be around family, but it's being recommended not to, right. But people again are going to put what they want oftentimes ahead of what science and medicine is saying. So we still just have to stay, stay vigilant, advocate um, as always for funding, additional funding. Additional funding is always helpful. And just to be creative in how we do this work in communities, because we don't live in just the COVID-19 silo. We don't just live in an HIV AIDS silo. We don't just live in a diabetes silo or an obesity silo or a hypertension silo. In all of these conditions, African-Americans or Blacks lead in in the number of infections. So we just have to really think holistically and comprehensively um, with all of our just health, like our overall health. Well, I'm hoping, I, th I think when we talk about 2021 and what we hope will come in the new year, that we will follow um, uh, your warning and that, or your advice, and that is to really put our health first. Um, because uh, that, that's that's what we've been dealing with for a whole year with COVID, but then for like you said, forty years with um, HIV and AIDS. How how does how is us helping us funded? I, I know we talked about the grant that you received. That's what um, uh, Sheila mentioned in in the video. But how are you all funded? 
Um, as 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 nonprofits, you have to find all different diverse pools of money. Um, so um, we are coming right off of our annual gala last night, in which you are um, an awardee. So we have events like that that um, solicit donations. So you can always go to our website and donate. Um, uh, just like on Giving Tuesday, uh, we just look for different donations uh, from the community. Some uh, community members, when they come in for services, they also give donations. Um, but we're also funded uh, through grants from the federal government, uh, from the from the C from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in particular, uh, from DC Health and HOSTA. We're funded by Prince George's County Health Department. Uh, we recently. Um, well, we have some pending awards um, from other governmental agencies um, from the uh, state of Maryland and also um, DC, um, other parts of DC government um, and other corporate foundations. So we are funded by the Greater Washington Foundation, Washington AIDS Partnership, um, and also other corporate um, um, companies from pharmaceutical companies to uh, electricity companies because they have philanthropic arms that um have initiatives around improving health so of course hiv is health and so we um um get or procure fundings from different corporations as well well it sounds like you have a lot of sources but i don't want folks to think that they yeah, do, couldn't fun. use the help of of, of everybody uh and it yeah. also is a, a testament to uh, the effectiveness of the program uh, yeah. that you all have been doing for so many years and i want to congratulate you for that and your whole team there at us helping us um in closing is there are there any special you know messages that you're giving folks either for the holidays or for the new year that you have to share before we sign off yeah um one that we know that sex is um healthy and we want everybody to be responsible. We know that sex has been happening throughout the pandemic because um, us helping us, we never closed and we were here um, again for all of your sexual health needs. So we um, uh, were able to treat individuals who became friends with uh, Ms. Gloria or Ms. Midia, as we call them, or scientifically gonorrhea and chlamydia. So uh, we just say that, yes, we're sex positivity. We know it happens, um, but there are ways to prevent the transmission of HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. Um, another message is that, um, again, we look at holistic health. We will be, um, we're, we're looking to expand our screening services because um, Blacks are at highest risk for hypertension and diabetes and not having these conditions under control, just, which means we're not taking our medications for those either. So um, just to really um, put our health first, um, because oftentimes we're going to be the only ones that are going to do that and also advocate for good health care. Um, and then if you do have some pocket change left from your Christmas shopping that you can always contribute not only to the Washington Informer um, and getting that subscription, as well as donating to um, us, helping us so we can continue these critical services in many underserved uh, communities in the DMV. Well, Dr. Dixon, thank you so very much for being with us and for sharing. I think this vital information, you know, we're here to keep this message going Absolutely. to uh, be your echo chamber. So uh, I know you just had surgery on that knee yesterday. Yeah. Um, so yeah. take care of that. Um, yeah. Get well and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. Thanks so much, Denise. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me.